Good evening, everybody. It's 6 o'clock, or they're close enough. Uh, we're going to begin with a work session this evening. Uh, discussion item number one is Gardner Municipal Airport. Brian, uh, you've got some presentation for us, correct? Correct. Very good. Well, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight's discussion on the Gardner Municipal Airport is broken down four areas. The first includes a brief history of the Gardner Airport and its current operations. The second identifies issues raised by the auditors. The third is how FAA grant eligible airports in Kansas are managed. And the fourth are airport options as Gardner moves forward. We have included both an aerial photograph as well as a recent photograph of the airport. The airport does sit on approximately 129 acres and has an FAA designation of K-34. As far as history, the airport's beginning was in 1935 as an emergency airfield for mail route pilots. Um, they would use the airport when conditions were no longer conducive for continued flights. The airport was given to the Department of Navy for training while Naval Air Station Olathe was being constructed at what is now New Century Air Center. <coughs> the terminal was built by the Navy in 1941-42 and the Navy did turn the airport back to the city of Gardner with the stipulation that the site remain for aeronautical purposes. Current usage of the airport, it is a safe haven for recreational flyers and aviation enthusiasts. It's part of the federal system of airports, the National Plan of Integrated Airport Systems, and as such is eligible for FAA grants. There are currently about 100 base aircraft at the Gardner Municipal Airport. And there is a waiting list for aircraft owners in the area wanting to rent hangar space. <coughs> there is an existing airport master plan. That master plan was updated and approved in March of 2010, and it is available on our city website. The master plan does call for improvements to runways, additional land acquisition, along with increased hangar space. <coughs> It also calls for the extending and paving of runway 1735, which is the north-south runway. Drainage improvements have been made and land acquisition for the purpose of extending the runway have already begun. Adjustments to runway 826 are anticipated to shorten the runway protection zone, the RPZ, at the east end of the runway. Currently, the runway protection zone extends over Waverly Road. And so by shortening the runway on the east side, we pull that runway protection zone back on the other side of Waverly. We are also currently developing minimum standards for the airport. And the plan does include recommendation for improvements extending 20 years into the future. Okay, this layout shows uh, what the master plan identifies as some of the ultimate configuration for the airport. The areas highlighted in gray uh, are part of the airport as of today, and the areas highlighted in yellow are identified as future needs. In 2014, the Sizemore property along Highway 56 was purchased. This picture does not reflect that. As far as the audits, uh, the 2014 audit findings were previously presented to both the governing body and most recently to the airport board. 
and the findings are fairly self-explanatory. They do include lack of proper procedures and controls, lack of segregation of duties, along with bank reconciliations that are not performed and reviewed in a timely manner. From airport management, of the 140 public use airports in Kansas, 78 are currently eligible for FAA grants. The typical governance used by airports eligible for FAA grants include an airport board, an airport manager, and an airport authority. Policy direction. What we need to define is what the city's vision for the airport is. And once we've established what that vision is, how to oversee that vision. Airport options. In looking at our vision, what are our options for the airport? On the surface, some of the options of presenting tonight may seem initially unrealistic. However, we felt it was important to bring those options for you to allow you to provide direction as the city moves forward. First option is pretty self-explanatory, close the airport. Go the way. The challenges that include with federal grants and loss of hangar space in the area. Closure would be difficult, it would be costly, and it would be very time consuming. On the other side of that, if the airport is closed, it does open up 129 acres immediately adjacent to the logistic park KC. Be a possible industrial <laughs> business park or provide additional housing opportunities. The site also could be used for future city facilities, public works, law enforcement, and parks. <coughs> if we still desire to have an airport, if the site is closed, it could be possible to relocate the airport further to the west. Section op second option, leave the airport as is, as it's currently uh, functioning. And if we did that, we would continue working towards the improvements identified in the master plan. Those improvements include additional land acquisition for runway improvements and additional hangars. Utilization of the airport would remain the same. It would continue to cater to recreational flyers and aviation enthusiasts. And with runway improvements and additional hangars, UCs would be expected to increase. Our third option would be to update the master plan to increase utilization of the airport. We could market the airport and surrounding properties to encourage businesses, possibly including a small business park and restaurants to locate in close proximity to the airport. Don't know how many of you have been to Miami County, but we got Weeby smoking at the airport great restaurant. A lot of people fly into that restaurant to eat and get their hours. We could accelerate improvements to the airport, additional runways and hangar space. Airport would still cater to recreational flyers, but also be corporate and business friendly. Our fourth option, and this is kind of on the other end of the spectrum, be aggressive in airport updates and utilization. Corporate and business draw to the area transition away from recreational flyers and aviation enthusiasts, move to corporate and business customers, acquire additional property for new terminals, additional runways and business park, compete with New Century and Johnson County Executive Airports. With that, staff is seeking council guidance on options to further investigate <coughs> as the Gardner Municipal Airport as we move forward. And that'd be available for questions. Okay. Well, we're going to open the floor for public comments at this time. If there's anyone that's in attendance that would like to make public comments about the presentation regarding the airport, uh, now is the time uh, to do it. But as we do have members of the airport uh, commission here, uh, obviously they're I'm sure they would stand ready to answer questions if, uh, if we want to direct any of them, but if uh, anybody wants to make public comment now, step forward.
forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record. My name is Paul Willie. My address is 14285 South Waverly Road, Gardner, Kansas. Um, I'd just like to comment that uh, I think that you really have a gem out there in respect to a small airport. It's one of those little uh, community in itself also that has a lot of people that are involved in that type of thing. So if I was going to give any input, it would be encourage you to consider, you know, keeping that going and keeping it up the way it needs to be. There would be any one complaint that I would have is, is that I've I've been on that list for over 10 years. There's no, there's no available. So it tells you there's people interested in it. Um, I'd also comment that uh, I think that the folks that uh, are overseeing the operation right now are doing a really good job. I go out there once or twice a week with my children. I've been to different events that are out there. And I, I think that they do a pretty good job of uh, making sure things are working. And that's all I'd like to say. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Hi, Tori Roberts, 17125, Jessica, Gardner, Gardner, Kansas. Hi, everybody. Hi, I um, wanted to voice, I live by that airport. I've been there for 11 and a half years. I love the airport. I love them as a neighbor. They're great. Um, if I had the choice, I would pick number two, but I'd also pick number three to maybe add a restaurant. Um, I was lucky enough to, I didn't prepare anything, I just winged it right now. I was lucky enough to sit on some of the interviews for the board members, and that really brought up um, a lot. And it, 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 oh gosh, made me awake to what they all do there. It's a great board, it's a great airport, and that's just kind of my opinion. So thanks. Thanks, Tori. Thanks, Tori. So with no one else coming forward, uh, questions for Brian or other staff uh, regarding the presentation? I have a quick one. If we were to move forward with doing something like a mini executive type airport versus Chuck's County, how are we situated out there for utilities to tie everything in? I mean, is it, I mean, the stuff out there we're going to have to... Oh, well, uh, the, the road network road network would need to be improved. Right. Um, you have a, a bad intersection at uh, Waverly and 175th. Right. Between the size and drainage issues out there, that area is extremely flat. You have water lines both the north and south side of the 175th. Um, can't speak for Gardner Energy, but I right. imagine they're out there. say with with what's there existing uh, and potential improvements to the runways and those things I mean how to compete with someone like Johnson County or, or some of the surrounding ones like that for corporate type business would it be pretty extensive to upgrade the runways and everything around it very much so I think you need longer runways um, so there'd be a lot of additional property acquisition in your in your CDF that was presented there actually is a um, Kind of an aerial photograph showing additional properties both east and west that are currently mostly agricultural in nature uh, where the airport could be expanded to or i mean i think it'd be hard just you know we we've talked about some of the options not necessarily being realistic from from, from my standpoint option number four uh, competition with new century as well as johnson county executive three airports in johnson county that do the same thing i think would be a challenge what about then option three? Is it, is it set up right now to take some type of corporate, you know, some type of corporate plane that would come in? Or I'd have to. Say the question again. Yeah, is it set up right now to take a, a small corporate jet? No. No. No, we're kind of landlocked between all the different facilities with 50 Lake Highway, you know, the longest you've probably been there, it's like 3,500 feet. That wouldn't qualify for any of the jets there, but a lot of small stuff, twins. If you did extend the property to the west, I mean, you have a pretty good distance to the west. And again, if you look at the, the aerial, if there's possibility to it. 
but you are landlocked to the west, east side is Waverly, north side is 175th, and south side is yeah, US 56. A um, couple of questions that come to mind. Um, I think that it's, it's uh, more amenities would be nice at the airport. Absolutely, I think that'd be uh, it'd be nice to have a small uh, office park out there. Um, even some potentially some uh, some residences on the west side of the airport. Um, I know a lot of uh, uh, recreational type fields like this where you can have like you know drive-in you know or, or fly-in residences, which would be a real draw. I think that a whole lot of aircraft enthusiasts would love to take some of that property on the west side of the airport and, and make up make a, a, a rather nice uh, second tier housing option with a fly-in option for people who want to fly in and out of town on their, in their, in their twins. Um, I think that a whole lot of people would like that. Um, additional hangars would be a good thing to have on the west side of that north-south runway, and I believe that in the master plan it's included in that. Is that correct? So um, that's so that'll that'll definitely help. Um, uh, so there's a lot of potential here, as I guess is what I'm saying, and, and I think that uh, um, more involvement of the council in, in, in trying to help set those uh, <coughs> plans would be good for the, from the standpoint of, of realizing its potential. Um, we have a real asset out there. I think someone said that in public comments, and they're absolutely right. We have a real asset there, and to a certain extent, we're kind of underutilizing it. So I'd like to see more of that. Um, I do want to go back to something though and that, that, that's somewhat concerning to me and we've, we've actually talked about this before and that's the audit findings. Mm -hmm. um, we need to fix those audit items and regardless of what happens with whatever option we choose and I would probably choose somewhere a combination of two and three but I think we need to have a little bit better management of the, of the financial side of things and the leasing, the lease issues that have been identified need to be addressed. Um, and, and that's just from the standpoint of consistency and making sure that we treat everybody equally and that they have the opportunity or the, the option to be able to um, take advantage of leasing opportunities that come free, um, whether it's through non-payment or whether it's through somebody um, divesting themselves of, a, of the hangar or whatever. So um, uh, I think there's going to be some changes in that area. I'm not sure exactly what the will of the council is going to be but I think that we'll probably want to address that. That's all I have. Well, one of the things that was in the, uh, the council discussion forum uh, was management options as well. I didn't yeah. see that presented this evening. Uh, there were airport options. Um, and I, I think everybody would be interested in seeing the airport either option two or, or, or possibly some kind of version of option three uh, where uh, it gets a little more beyond just the recreational flyer uh, <coughs> as an amenity, but the, uh, so the, I think uh, Choosing between the, the four options, I think maybe we still need we would need to come up with an idea of a, a, a option that's a combination of mm -hmm. two and three, yeah. actually. I think that yeah, that's where I'm that's agree. Yeah. <coughs> and I, I'd be interested to hear uh, what the, the people from the airport board have to have to say about that. I know they've got a comprehensive. I mean a, a, a comprehensive plan, a, a development plan in place, but does it take into consideration, it does take into consideration lengthening the runway and adding hangars, but you know, does it, does the plan deal with amenities uh, to the airport, whether it's uh, an update to the uh, terminal building uh, or anything, any, any other kind of whether it's a, a restaurant or retail or, or whatever. <laughs> and, and yeah, actually, if you, if you step to the, the microphone, if you've got something to say. Yeah, I'm uh, Ray Durr. I live here in town, and I have an airplane out there, and I just love the, 
airport that's out there, but one of the biggest things that it could probably use is you can see all those old buildings, right? Uh, I mean, that hangar was originally built a long time ago, and it's still being used for service today, so they, uh, you know, maintain a bunch of airplanes there, you know, as a, as a business. But one of the things that could really be used is a new terminal facility. Now, it's going to be kind of hard to tear down what's already there because it's functional, but it's just not, you know, the washrooms are horrible for residents flying through and transitioning here. They park their airplanes on the ramp, they tie them down, they go into town, you know, family comes, picks them up. There's quite a bit of that. Uh, there'd be a lot more of that if, you know, they built a new terminal facility and one of the options there is if we had the land, you know, we have to have our runway clearance zones to the south, which backs up to 56 Highway. But that other property we're buying there for those clearance zones could certainly be used to build the terminal facility off 56 Highway, which would answer your question about getting access to facilities and water and sewer and all that kind of stuff would make a lot more sense in my opinion. So that, that would be a, a huge change. And the property to the east along Waverly is where the master plan has another 20 hangars allocated if we buy that plan, which we currently do not own today. So thank you. Uh, does the, and, and Dave, maybe you can, uh, you know, does the master plan take into consideration an update to the terminal building or, or well, anything like that? Runways, hangars, taxiways, like the facilities you've got to have to fly. The, the airport master plan does include uh, section table <laughs> 7.1, and it's actually a kind of a summary of the projects phase one, phase two, phase three, and now through 20 years. And it does include additional hangars, taxiways, runway improvements, but not improvements to the uh, terminal itself. And one of the one of the issues that we do receive a lot of grant funding for uh, improvements to the airports. Those have to be used for aeronautical purposes. And so, if we were looking at trying to encourage business or acquire land for non-aeronautical purposes, uh, Brad can answer that. But I don't believe FAA grants can be used for that. Brad Weisenberger, I'm an airport consultant that the airport board has hired uh, with uh, professional engineering consultants. The FAA grant program really is designed towards runways, taxiways, pavement issues. Hangars and terminal buildings are eligible, but you've got to have all your other airfield items met. So in order to get to those dollars for terminal buildings, you would have to have your runway and in great condition, your taxiway issues all resolved markings, lighting, all those things would have to be in top notch shape before they'd allow you to spend any money on a, on a terminal building. How far how far away were, are we from from being top notch where we could move on to something like the terminal building? Well you know, I've been actually all working twenty with years of the master plan? Uh, we're probably quite a ways away still. We have land acquisition I mean, with the airport board did first master plan, I think in 2006, somewhere in there. Uh, so we got to buy land to protect our borders, so to speak. And that's what they've been doing. The FAA's been just doing out small grants, and they've uh, been diligent in buying properties. A couple of, one of the homes came up and was for sale by owners, so they bought that one. And so they've been working, whittling away at it, I guess would be a good term. Uh, but there hasn't been a real big push to plunge and really buy a lot of property and you know, try to get the 20-year plan moved up to a, a faster pace. Sure. Dave uh, Hayden with the airport board and, and uh, as far as our, we're pretty frugal with our money <clears throat> and we're constantly saving for our 10% because that's a match for all of these FAA, any grants we get. So we always want to have our 10% ready for, uh, for a grant that we get. And so, uh, and that some, sometimes that's 30 or $40,000 a year. So, so we say that we try to save that back or at least 50,000 a year to, for a grant. 
And when the big runway comes in, we're going to need more than that, so we're going to be having to uh, save several years for it, probably. But uh, we, w with all of our volunteer help, we don't have any overhead except for a part-time <coughs> employee. And, uh, and so all of the money that we, we don't use for, for improvements out there, we, we save back for our 10%. We could, uh, the city could provide um, the match um, through city resources, so we could have that to be part of it, much like we would with other funds that we use where we have it as part of our budget as well. We have water, wastewater projects, although we don't use general funds for them. So we could. Mm -hmm. one, one thing that's a result of the audit finding, it's also part of my legal uh, opinion as well, because of the structure of the airport, the all, all the finances have to be part and parcel of the city's budget. So if, if it's not going to be a, um, if it's not going to be a, a grant funded terminal or something like that, then it would need to be an expenditure which complied with you know, every aspect of the city's budget laws, cash basis laws. You know, if it was going to be a capital. amenities would be a real draw. Um, I'm uh, uh, also bringing holding out some hope that we might be able to have some residences out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, folks that, folks, I mean, I'm looking here, there's a, there's a high-end uh, 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 subdivision uh, out west of Chicago called Arrow Estates. And folks fly in, now they're, now sometimes they're enthusiasts, sometimes they're, they use their plane for business. Um, they fly in, they park it at their house in their own hangar, they, you know, get in their car, they drive around, go use restaurants and all sorts of other stuff, and then they get in their plane if they have to go out of town and fly out of their house. Um, and those are very, very high-end <coughs> homes, and I don't think that there's any place like that anywhere in the Kansas City metro area. 
<clears throat> and a child, but it doesn't have very many homes on it, and they call them air parks. Yeah. Okay, and they design basically the homes around the runway where you have mm -hmm. separate roads and separate taxiways for the airplanes. But out at Gardner, being a public airport, you have to have like through the fence agreements. Yeah. You know, for that land to the west, if you could do something That's like that. That's the and land and I'm thinking of. That's <laughs> for all that. <laughs> so. I mean, there's 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 other ways we could evolve the, the vision of the airport other than just you know adding a restaurant or two or adding an office park, but you know. Which which lends again to updating the master plan, which is where Absolutely. we kind of would come in with that. But that's the option for you. That's the portions of option right. you're talking about. It will never become an airport that to me it would never become an airport that would not be catering to enthusiasts and recreational flyers because we don't have the space for a corporate. So if I were to update this option three to incorporate option two, I'd probably just add the last clause in option two, catering to recreational flyers. I would just add that to option three. And then uh, corporate and business uh, interests or corporate and business aviation, that's that's anything from, uh, from a single engine Piper so, up through yeah. uh, business jets. So we know that business jets are not going to operate out there. No reason to yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we can't even get the jet fuel. So, uh, so yeah, that's I guess that's what I would do. Is, yeah. that, that pretty much eliminates options. Mm -hmm. One other question, and Brian, I'm not sure if you know this or if Mr. Hayden knows this, but you know we talked about uh, waiting lists and we've talked about this. I think since I've been on council that there's pretty little turnover as far as people out there. So. Have we done some analysis that looks at the payback on putting additional hangers out there and what sort of benefit? I mean, I guess when I when I start thinking about this, there's a natural priority in my mind. And if there's if, if the answer is more hangers so that we can generate more revenue out there, does that <coughs> help facilitate some of this other stuff as well? Yeah, I mean, I haven't uh, personally done the analysis on it. I think we may have to acquire some additional <coughs> property. Before we can actually uh, put the hangers there. Before, before we need, before we talk about additional hangers, we need to make sure that we're managing the hangers that we Correct. have. Correct. Yep. We have approximately 100 uh, T hanger spaces available at the site. And all of them are full, cool, right? Right. That's correct. I think they built the last hangar. We built 2004, four or five. 2004, that, and it was. Yeah, and it takes about 25 years or so to pay them off. And that was uh, both 20, 20 aircraft, and I think you went through about 33 names. Before you names the thing that concerns me about the management of the hangars is, is if we have a 10 year plus waiting list, and we're the only airport in the area that I know of with that long of a waiting list, um, something tells me that something's not being done there. That's, um, right. That's not true. Um, the reason for such a long list is there's so many right. people. Maybe can we get you to come to the. Yes, please, please. Yeah, if you're going to make comments from the audience, please. Yeah, the microphone. I, I personally look after the hanger list, and I've done it all, put it in Excel, and I track everybody who wants to be on the upgrade list or, or, you know, a new person coming into town that wants to be on that list. And when I first moved here in 99, uh, I put my name on that list, and it took me seven years to get a hanger. And the only reason, when they built the 20 new ones, I was the first person not to get one. So there was 44 names that came off that list for those 20 and I still didn't get one. I didn't get one until a year later. But I think the reason the list is so long, if you put your name on the OJC slash IXD list, they have one combined list for those two airports at Johnson County. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people sm flying small airplanes like flying out of those airports. For one, they're towered airports and a lot of people like flying out of non-towered airports like Gardner where we have a lot of tail draggers, a lot of people like flying off of grass. So there's just, and the camaraderie out at Gardner is totally different than what you see at OJC and New Century, which are more business-based or people who are there, they go to fly and they leave, that's it. They don't hang around. Whereas Gardner is really a friendly community of uh, pilots and uh, people who enjoy flying. So I've got a follow-up to Lee's question, and that is, you know, uh, the current waiting list right now is how deep? It's about 80 deep. And then there's about 10 or so on the upgrade list. So when a new hangar comes on, I go through the upgrade list because they get priority over somebody new. And then we have to call down through the names and find out. And sometimes they're that long because you, you don't audit everybody on the list every time. 
you know, like once a month because you got to call everybody and you don't have a hanger to give them, so you're just wasting their time. So when one comes up, I got to go down through the list and find out do they want to pass, do they want it, did they move away? Sure. So there's a lot of that. But that's why it took 44 names to fill 20 hangers. Okay. So even if there was 80 on it, probably 35 to maybe 35 would, would want them. Sure. Um, the other question I have is, you know, we're talking about increasing capacity of, the, uh, of hangers. And Lee makes a very good point about, you know, um, are we are we uh, maximizing the value of the hangar space we currently have? And that is not necessarily in utilization, but maybe in terms of our bill, uh, pricing. Our, 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 our pricing. Um, Supply and demand. Yeah, exactly. If, 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 the, if the prices are low, if the price point is low, you're going to have a great amount of demand. Um, is, have there any been any talk about adjusting those? Yeah, those we've talked rates? about that. I mean, they were they were updated, you know, quite a bit a few years ago when we built the new ones and stuff. But sure. yeah, you know, in comparison them to IXD and other ones, like if you put your name on the IXD list, you might be only on there in a year, and you might get your name on the hangar. Yeah. Right. But uh, a lot of people just prefer not to fly out of those type of airports. So. But yeah, it's something we always consider every time we, you know, fairness across the board, like we're doing it. Uh, improvements to the hangars, like adding doors, so we jacked up the price because we had to put electricity in those and we put uh, bifold automatic doors, so we adjusted the price on those hangers. So yeah, it's something we keep in mind all the time. Do we have consistent pricing schedules for these hangers or is it kind yeah. of like an, a case by case basis? No, we have, we have discrete prices based on what you get, whether you get a brand new hanger with a concrete floor versus one that's got a bifold door and a dirt floor versus some of the older ones. So there's like about five different iterations of hangers as they got built over the last 40 or 50 years. And the arrangements of the people who are leasing the hangers, can they sublease those hangers to other Yes, Gardner does allow subleasing. So that's the other reason for a lot of the uh, low turnover. If somebody is in between airplanes, you know, they can sublease it to somebody for a year while they finish theirs or uh, figure out what to buy next or stuff like that. So right. yeah, that's... Are subleases allowed by the airport board bylaws? Yes, it's uh, by the agrees agreement, yeah. Okay. Is there a limit on how long they can sublease? No. <coughs> is that a best practice for airports across the state or Midwest or country? We can't control it. Well, it is the county thinks that they don't allow subleasing, but I can tell you there's a whole bunch of subleasing over at the county airports too. I mean, we'd yeah. have to have a, a police force to well, the concern I've got when we bring up subleasing is that, you know, Gardner Airport's a community airport. We want it to stay a community airport. The problem that we've got is that there's folks that potentially could sublease to people from out of state who are just, you know, who are, who are flying in and utilize the airport for their own purposes and leaving, but it, it doesn't allow an individual who is a, who's a local in this area who's been on that waiting list for five, six, seven years to get an opportunity to, you know, to hangar their, their aircraft there. Am I correct in that? I mean, yeah. out of state, out of county, you know. And another thing I wanted to do on the on the list since, you know, joining the board, I guess they used to have it years ago, is to give people that live in Gardner, first you know, priority. first priority on the list, right? Exactly. Instead of somebody from Lenexa, you know, that just wants to be at a, a smaller, friendlier airport. Sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Thanks. One more question. Dale? Oh. Dale uh, wanted to say something. Yeah. Dale, come on up. I'm Dale Rose, uh, one of the airport uh, board members. Uh, just a point of interest here, uh, the airport was turned over to, from the city to the board in rep from about 82, 83. Since then, uh, the airport has put out about $2 million. I put a pencil to it the other day, roughly $2 million with improvements, which not cost the city a dime. And uh, it was all from hangar rent and because we don't make anything on fuel and uh it was just uh pretty fair management from the prior board members that, oh, through the years and uh so it uh, has worked out real well like i said we've upgraded the hangars uh, built new hangars put in overlaid runway improved the runways because it was gravel at one time now it's you know, 30 foot to six thousand foot runway out there and so it's just uh just point of interest there it is mm -hmm. you bet thanks Dale. thank you one other 
other question. Is there a, I, I'm assuming that based on the airport as it is today, even with some of the planned um, expansions of the runway and so forth, that we, we get to a point where we're kind of at maximum capacity? Do we know, I mean, as far as the number of planes that are out there and that are coming in and out, is there, I mean, is there something that, over, that gover governs that um, as far as traffic and so forth? No, not really. I mean, traffic, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, takeoffs and landings out of Gardner, you know, being small, you know, but the people transient and stuff will just tie down there on the ramp area, you know, so certainly having a new terminal with a larger ramp area, more people could tie down, but we got about four tie down spots that uh, people transit. And one of the things I would love to see is a, a airport or a courtesy car. A lot of airports you fly into have a courtesy car that you can put gas in them and drive them into town, whether it be a mile or two to go get lunch if there's not a restaurant right at the field. Um, so a lot of things like that for the friendly airport. But yeah, Gardner gets used a lot as a transfer airport. You know, people going to Oshkosh, stop there for gas. We usually try to keep our fuel prices low to attract people to fly into Gardner versus some of the other airports around. Certainly we're cheaper than IXD or OJC. So, so there's no, so, so I guess we have about 100 planes kind of in and out of there today. So if that doubles to 200, you wouldn't see an issue from a capacity perspective? That not really, be. not really. No, not unless somebody's running a business that's constantly doing this stuff. I mean, we had a flight school there, so they, you know, they had, airplanes on the ramp and they were doing takeoff and landings doing their practicing and stuff but it doesn't really add too much to the traffic in that terms but in terms of you know expansion you obviously got to have the land to have the hangars mm -hmm. okay so that's what we don't have right now is any more land to build hangars on when it comes to the management option that's been listed before uh, how is what we're currently doing different than a an airport authority being established and uh, I guess it's just that, that the city hasn't conveyed all the property to the airport I can, you wanna, yeah I can address it so um, under the state statutes there are kind of two different statutes that uh, and they are authorized or enable uh, airport authorities um, this airport could fall into one of those statutory provisions because as Brian went through on the history of it, it, it was um, a surplus property that was ultimately granted to the city um, way back when. Um, and so it would qualify to incorporate as an airport, airport association. Uh, the current structure doesn't satisfy that requirement for several reasons. Number one, the enabling legislation specifically dictates that the ordinance that creates the airport association has to cite the statute um, and indicate that it is creating an airport authority pursuant to that statutory authority. The ordinance that we have that created um, the code section which enabled the structure that we have now did not do that. Um, the, the other piece is that um, you have to, like you said, grant all right property and interest in the land to the airport association. And what, and what it does is, and there, there are several examples of this around the state, is when you create that airport authority pursuant to that statutory procedure, it, it becomes its own municipal entity. Yeah. You as the city no longer have control over it. It doesn't become part of your budgeting. It's a, you, you've deeded away the asset. Um, you can pull it back in, I believe it's after at least 10 years um, by dissolving it. But um, short of that, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of hands off. It becomes its a complete autonomy and its operations. Um, and, and that is not the structure that we have. We have a lease um, and the ordinance that we uh, created our airport authority um, with did not do so pursuant to that statute. In fact, our ordinance was passed before that enabling legislation was even enacted by the Kansas legislature. So, so our ordinance was passed in 1958 and the enabling legislation was like 1965. 
term in the, the model, like where there's an airport manager, does that airport manager, are they a city employee or are they a employee that reports to the board? I think you can actually do it two different ways. It could be a city employee to hire an airport manager via city department or we could contract that out. I say we just give Brian his wings. Let's put another thing on your plate. <coughs> really good at volunteering. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really interested in the accounting yeah. function part of it, uh, which only would uh, be pertinent in the first two options under the, the management option. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've already got a, isn't what we have already an airport board system of management? Yours, yours is a little different because um, you've got this corporate structure, um, you know, the, the ordinance that created the airport authority here not only created a board, um, which is created under the authority of the governing body, it, it also allowed for the creation of this separate corporation, not-for-profit corporation, which is... 5-1-2-3. Well, well, we'll talk about that in executive session, but um, that, that, is, that is different than, I think, the other structures that, that Brian was looking at. Okay. I don't, I don't think I would, I would favor establishing an airport authority at all. I don't think so. I don't think having no. that asset handed off is a, is a good idea at all. Well, it, it is an asset. I mean, I think that all of us at the dais, as well as the folks that are from the airport board, would agree that this is yes. something that, that is a community asset. It's something that the community benefits from. It's a unique um, construct. And I think that we need to uh, work together, uh, both city and uh, and board, to make it, you know, as you know, as close to its potential as we possibly can. Um, my concern is the accounting issues, and if we can get the accounting issues squared away, um, that that would be my preference you know, to you know, kind of keep it as close to the current form as possible and make it statutorily. Or is that something that our finance and accounting department could handle if that's, if we so chose? We do whatever you tell us to do. <laughs> However, I might be coming to you at some point and saying, um, gee, I really could use a little extra help, but I, I don't know that yet. So no, that's a fair enough answer. If you say do it, we will do it. Streets, sidewalks, stormwater, and, and runways. Uh, no, we still have an airport board. <laughs> they're, they're fine right the way they are. Uh, any other questions or comments? Yeah. If not, we'll go ahead and take a, a brief break before we begin council meeting. We'll start that at 7 o'clock. And... Uh, for those of you that don't usually make it out here, thank you for coming out this evening. Always good to see uh, faces in the audience. 